In this episode, I'm going to show you how to use the new input system to make the player aim at the mouse position. So let's go. Let's open the project and take a quick look at what we need to accomplish. In a top-down game, we only need to rotate our objects on the z-axis, as you can see here. But right now we have an issue. Because our player is a circle, we can't tell which way it's facing. To solve this, let's create a square sprite as a child object, drag it slightly to the left and resize it so it looks like it's a gun. Don't spend too much time on it because we're gonna change it in the next episode anyway. Alright, with this you can see that it's much clearer to see in which direction the player is facing. Next up, let's go into the scripts, create a new C-sharp script and we'll call this one rotator. And as you can tell by the name, this one's gonna be responsible for rotating objects. Open it up, delete everything that we don't need and also include this script inside the top-down movement namespace. The only responsibility of this script will be to rotate objects towards a target. So for this purpose, let's create a protected void called look at, which is gonna take in a vector free argument called target. In here we'll do two things. First of all we'll calculate the angle between the transform and the target and secondly we will assign this value to the transform's Euler angle on the z-axis. For calculating the angle we're gonna need a local float variable called look angle which is gonna be zero for now. And once you have it let's just take it and assign it to the transform z Euler angle. Now the question is how do we calculate this angle? For this let's create a private float called angle between two points. It's gonna take in two vector free parameters, the first one called A and the second one called B. To get the result, we're gonna use the mathf.atan2 method, which basically returns the angle in radians. And inside, we're gonna pass in the difference between the A and the B point, first on the y axis and then on the x axis. But this is still not the result we're looking for because this is in radians, but we need degrees. But it's enough for us just to multiply this by mathf.radian to degree, which as you can see is just a conversion constant. And voila, we got the result. Now we can use this method to calculate the look angle by passing in the transform's position and the target at which it needs to look at. The script is done. Now we need to take the player and make it rotate towards the mouse, but that's gonna take place in another script called player rotation, which we're gonna create now. Open it and do what we always do, add it to the top-down movement namespace and delete everything that we don't need. One important detail here is that this script will not inherit from Mona behavior but from the rotator script, in order to use the look at method. Now just to test how this works, let's create an update method, inside we're gonna call look at and pass in vector 3.0, which is basically gonna make the player look at the center of a map. Let's get back into Unity, attach the player rotation script to the player object and press play. As you can see the player is looking somewhere and it's looking there consistently which is good but it's not looking in the right spot so let's check why. After a bit of digging I have found that the solution to the problem is to add 90 degrees to our look angle because by default in Unity objects tend to look to the right not towards their target. I can't exactly explain why this is the way it is but as you can see it works correctly now. Now we can open the player rotation script and move on to the last task, which will be to determine the mouse position and make the player look that way. Let's get back into the editor and open the input asset that we created in the last episode. Here we need to create a new action and we'll simply call this one look. As the action type we'll select value and as the control type we'll pick vector 2 because we need the x and y position of the mouse. Now for the binding, open the path, select mouse and then choose the position. And just to make sure that we do everything correctly, let's check the keyboard and mouse checkbox underneath the control scheme. Once you've done that, you can just close this window and press save. Now we can go back to the player rotation script, and instead of the update method, we'll create a new private void called onlook. Just gonna remind you that it has to be spelled exactly this way, otherwise it won't work and you won't know why. As a parameter, we'll use an input value. And in order for it to be recognized, we need to add using Unity Engine.input system. The parameter will simply be called value. Now open the curly brackets, create a new vector to called mouse position, and to get the position of a mouse, we can simply type value.get vector2. Alright, this is good, but this is the screen position of a mouse. We actually need the world position, and to get it we first need to make a conversion. 
To do that let's type in camera.main.screen to world point. Now that we have the exact position we can simply call the look at method and pass in the mouse position variable. Now let's get back into Unity and see how everything works. As you can see for yourself, everything is working perfectly. So, good job. Thanks for watching this episode and stay tuned for the next one. Huge thanks goes to all the supporters. George Mulcahy and the first YouTube member PD100 Academy of Art.